Not on the heater housing. Oh. That's in the series up. with the heater. What do you think that that one is doing? First of all, what temperature is that? 212. 212 degrees. 100 degrees Celsius is equal to 212 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And that's that's the same as what? What what happens at 212? Water boils. Um, that's somewhere around the heater. I'm Frigidaire, and I don't know about this particular model. I'm talking about the older ones. If you were to take the drum out of the dryer, you're looking at the dryer cabinet like this, and the heater's in the back and around can. Sometimes that thermostat's located against the back wall, like the wire comes in here and goes to the heater like that, and it's on the back wall. So that's if the housing of the heater exerts too much heat, it might do that. Now, I haven't looked at this one. Oh, so this one has around two of them, like the Samsung. Uh, no, more like the GEs. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at this diagram here is also the parts breakdown. Yeah. And let me see. View, rotate view, kind of clockwise. So that's the G is always at the back. Yeah, let's take a look at this, at the heater on this. Did I pass it? Probably. Yeah, I think you did. Judy. Yeah. Judy. Yeah. 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 Let's zoom out a little bit so I can see better. That's the motor. That's the control bar. The cabinet. This is the front. So if we look at the back of the at the unit, oh, this heater's See? down at the bottom like right. the Samsung. Right. Now that's not normal for most. They do have that on the Electrolux dryer, which is down in the bottom. But the older Frigidaire's was yeah. a round circular can <coughs> behind the drum. Yeah. So now they probably moved it here. Why do you think they moved it here? It's easier access. Easy, you don't have to take the drum out to change the heater. You don't take the machine this far apart. So that thermostat, let's see if we can find out where that thermostat's located. It's, these are, I think, feet. If we look at the heating element, we got number seven and number eight. Let's see what number seven and number eight are. Number seven is Number seven support. support heater. Number eight is the heater. So where is that thermostat? If they said that that thermostat, according to the diagram, the thermostat's on the heater, I don't see any other thermostats here, do you? It's not. Well, the Samsung's are always on the left side. But yeah, um, but if it, if it was a thermostat, yeah. it would be replaceable. Yeah. It could be internal on the heater, too, because the schematic drew a box and showed that inside the box, which meant it's part of the heater. Okay? Um, I don't see that thermostat on the housing. Anywhere on the housing, the only two uh, thermostats. We have one on here, and they're not showing a part here. But if we look at the blower yeah, breakdown, yeah, it, was, yeah, it shows you a breakdown. It only shows you two thermostats on the. Yeah, on the if we look at the blow. breakdown here, we can find the breakdown. There we go. Okay, we got this one here. This one is the which one housing. is this one? That's the blower housing. Yeah, but that's number two. And number two says thermostat blower housing, but which one is that temperature wise? That one was 340, well, no. 175 Celsius. 375 Celsius? What, 175. No, that'd be way too hot. It seems like Yeah, but if 100 Celsius is 212 degrees, Yeah. 175 Celsius, we have to go back to the diagram. Let's take a look at this for a second. This one says 175 degrees Celsius. Yeah. All right. And this one here, where's the other? Just got to slow down. Where's the other one? That caught my attention. To oh, this here. This here. one here. Oh, this one right here. Right This is 70 degrees Celsius. Yeah. 70 degrees Celsius. If, if it's lower than 100, it's going to be lower. Yeah. It look uh, and 100 was 212 degrees. So this one here is probably going to be within the 160 degree range. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what the math is. 70 it's Celsius is... Uh, the formula for the math, the yeah. equation is 7, it would be 70 multiplied by 1.8 plus 32. 
Because zero degrees. No, I mean Celsius. the other way, not huh? plus. What are you talking you about? Are you trying to find the Fahrenheit? You're going from, so from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Yes. No. So but this Celsius, we want to go to Fahrenheit. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be that it's times at nine, fifths. Nine, 9 divided by 5 no. plus 32. It's yeah, 9 fifths which Celsius is plus, plus 32, right? Don't, don't no, minus brain. 32. No, no, plus 32. Plus, plus, 32? plus 32. Okay, so 9 fifths of, of that, I'm not going to do the math. It's 1.8. That's one. That's nine. Fifth. So it's it's seventy multiplied by one point eight plus thirty two, because zero degrees is thirty two degrees Fahrenheit. Zero degrees Celsius is thirty two degrees Fahrenheit. So what's the answer instead of giving the mathematical equation? No, you're right. It is one point eight. What, what are you trying to find? Which one? Oh, which one? Seventy yeah. degrees. Just Google seventy so degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius. And what did I say? What did I say it was? I said about one sixty, right? Yeah. I was off by two degrees. Okay, so this is more like the operating, so if this is 175, this is probably going to put it about 250. Yeah, it's I thought the math was bad. 175, that came out to like three, 347, like everything would be yeah. on fire. Then, well, you, you can have it. That one will be on the heater housing somewhere. Okay, so anyways, um, let's go ahead and look at this, at this question. Uh, so 100 feet 212, and it's actually probably in line in the heater. Yeah. How can you test if the heater are good from the control board and identify the connector and the terminals you would use to test it? So let's go back to that. And you rotate clockwise. So how would you check the heaters from the board? You can uh, test pin CN81 and CN72. CN81 and CN72, if you put one meter lead here, I want me to lead here. You'll measure both of them in series, and if you don't get a reading, what does that mean? Well, most likely you got a bad heater. Yeah. So if you, if you got the control board at the top, you don't have to take the whole machine apart to go check that board. You can check the board from here. But what if this gave you a good reading, but you still had no heat, but you knew you had your 240 here or 220, so you knew the machine had proper power. What would you do then? Check the thermostat. Is it a thermostat that's leading to this? I'm sorry? There's two thermostats in front of it. Uh, well, it could be the thermostat, right? Could uh, be. Could be what else? The thermostat. No. The centrifugal switch? No. Yeah, it could be the centrifugal <coughs> switch, one end to two end. Could it be a relay? Yeah. yeah. But if you put it on high heat, most likely what would happen? Both relays would be energized. And what's the odds of both of those heaters being bad? One of them might break and the other one still might be good. So you'd, you'd have some heat, right? Mm -hmm. So if you knew one of the two were bad, you wouldn't get a reading for ohms, but you would check that. So how could you test without going down to the heater if the relays are closing and sending power to the heating element? What would you do without having to take the whole machine apart? You go there and you want to say, I want to know at least if the relays are sending power down. Without opening anything, you mean? Well, from the control board or whatever, I wouldn't go down to the heater yet because on this one, it doesn't have a bottom kick plate to get to you the heating right, element. Right so you have to take the whole front of the drum off and everything else. You check right where the connectors are from the relays. But where? You would check CN81 and CN72. No, because they're both, they're both line one. You got line one coming in here and line one coming in here, and then it goes through the relay and coming out. If you put a meter lead here and here, they're both line one. You're not oh, going to so get a reading. So you see an eight, one, and, and four, then, for one, and then see an eight, seven, and two for the other. Watch this. Now, not on all boards you could do this, so don't. You can do an ohms test on these relays. All right? You can do an ohms test? Yeah, you can do an ohms test on these relays. If we unplug this plug and unplug that plug, this is power going into that relay, power coming out of the relay. Somewhere on the board, there's a coil. When you tell it to start, this energizes and closes that switch. There's another coil here where it's energized and closes that switch. All that really is is a switch. If I unplug these two wires, there's no power here. I can take my ohm meter here and my ohm meter here with those plugs disconnected, start the dryer and see if both those relays are closing. 
And you do a Holmes test. I do an Holmes test. <clears throat> now, don't take me for, oh, Mr. Z said this, and I'm checking ohms on this board. You have to know by looking at the schematic, okay, if I unplug it, there's no other wires going to that switch. There's nothing else that can put power there. I'm not going to hurt myself or the meme. <laughs> I mean, don't go to another brand and do the same test unless the schematic, you understand it, you can read it. But I can put my meter here, unplug this, leave this plugged in so the board will run, and it'll close those switches. But there's no power there because we disconnected this one here and this one here. So neither one of them have energy. So you have to actually unplug them from the board. And what you are testing, I see a lot of people when they do a test, they unplug a wire from the board and they put in the meter lead on the wires and not the board. Or vice versa. They're trying to check the motor down in the machine and they unplug it. They take this plug off to test the motor and they're putting their pins on the board, not the wires going to the motor. If you're checking components in the machine, you're gonna test the wires. If you're checking the board itself, you're gonna to touch the board, okay? I've had people go to a motor, unplug the wiring harness from a motor, stick their meter leads on the wires, and say, Richard, the motor's not giving me any reading, I'm checking the motors. No, the motor's over here, you're checking the wires, you're not checking the motor. So make sure when you put your meter, you're either putting it here to check the heater or here to check the switch. Well, but if you unplug it, the motor isn't going to run though, right? Uh, so that's not the motor. These are the heaters. The motor is running off this motor relay over yeah. here. So yeah. the motor will run. Yeah. But what we don't even care if the motor is running. If we, even the motor wasn't running, the board would still come on. We can even check the motor relay. We don't plug this plug, put our meter lead here. We can check continuity of that switch. What, what relay did we test continuity of with the, with, the, with the board running like? But we took the wires off to test it. Remember the microwave? The power relay that sends power to the transformer was that big black relay on the board. And we were able to pull the wires off and test those two pins for resistance when we pull those two wires off because that switch don't have any power now. The relay would still close, and you can check to see if the relay is opening and closing. But... As long as the wires are off and you know that that's what you're testing, you can check continuity for that, even though the machine's running. All right? Let's go to this question. How does the moisture sensor work? The moisture sensor's over here. How does that work? I guessed on that one, but I would say that, like, it like the dishwasher, how it detects the turbidity sensor, how it detected, like, the, the density. Dirty water? Huh? Dirty water. This detects moisture, so the humidity in in, in the, the air, air inside no, the dryer. every time something moist hits it, yeah, it closes. It, the what circuit. what moist would hit it? Clothes. Clothes. The clothes being wet. Every time the clothes tumbled in the drum, this sensor. And if we went down a schematic, it's a little hard to see it here, but that sensor is right here, and it's mounted on the filter housing on the inside of the drum. So as the clothes are tumbling, they're not sitting there touching it all the time. They go around and they hit it. They go around and they hit it. We've had sometimes, and, and, and tech support will tell them, uh, hey, I put on sensor dryer and the dryer takes forever to dry my clothes. Or no, vice versa. It shuts off too soon. The clothes are still wet. Well, if the customer's front feet are too high up and the dryer's leaning back, the clothes are tumbling, they never hit the sensor. Dryer shuts off before time. Every time the wet clothes hit those two metal bands, that's two metal bands, the moisture in the clothes actually, when we put a shirt here, our arm, we put a shirt here, it conducts current across between the two terminals, that board sees it. Back in the day, every time a wet article of clothing hit it, it would pause the timer and delay the timer from ending the cycle. And as the clothes get drier, the drier it is, the higher the resistance, there'd be less current going through. The board knows that. Eventually, the board don't see it anymore, and it says, hey, I haven't had any wet clothes hit me in about 10, 15 minutes. You know, we're just about done. Let's get five more minutes, cool this thing down, go in the cool down, and shut the machine off before it's done. So it would only do that if you have it on an automatic setting, no? Not on a timed? Most dryers have an automatic which use the sensor and then the other ones use timed and say, if you say a 40 minute time, it can time out. 
but I've seen some whirlpools that even if you put it on timed, it still checks that sensor and overrides the time if it doesn't see wet clothes. What one other thing can happen to the sensor bands? Sees wet clothes? Huh? It, it senses, a C senses, that's what I meant. But, but what other thing can happen to those sensors? It can be It can be blocked by the filter? No, I don't know. Develop a coating. Like from what? Dryer sheets. Yeah, you know like those fabric softener sheets like bounce or snuggles and you throw it in and it, it's sort of like a little sheet that helps add a little bit of odor to the clothes or a little freshness to the clothes. Sometimes they're a little bit oily and if too many of them hit, they create an oily substance over the top of that band and that what happened, oil and water doesn't mix. So that even though the clothes are wet, it doesn't really sense them. So taking a, a, a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and cleaning it with some soap and water or maybe a slight little sandpaper or emery cloth just to sand it down a little bit allows it to sense the water temperature just slightly better and then it'll finish that cycle. So what would the complaint be in that case? That it would shut off before the clothes are completely dry. So, I mean, that's one thing to check, I suppose. Yeah, okay. well, if they complain that it's shutting off at, in 15 minutes or 10 minutes, and I put it on a 40-minute time dry, you know, and the clothes are still wet, usually if the customer complains clothes are still wet at the end of the cycle, what is that? It's usually a ventilation okay. problem, the dryer's not heating, we're not getting hot enough. But if all those things test out, the customer don't have the dryer vent hooked up, and you check the temperature out the back or go straight out the wall, and you got 145 degrees coming out the back, it should dry in 35 minutes, 40 minutes, most loads. And it's shutting off sooner, and the clothes are still wet, it might be the sensing bands may not be working properly. And we had one teacher here years ago who brought a machine in because of that, there was a whirlpool. And we did have to take and clean that thing really good, and we got it to work. So it does happen. Um, what temperature, make sure the dryer cycles at the correct, what component, I'm going to say temperature, I'm getting tired here. The thermistor. What component, make sure it cycles at correct temperature, the thermistor. The thermistor is telling the dryer the temperature, and that's what's cycling the relay. All the other thermostats are safeties or backups if the relay does not cycle. The 70 degree one though, does not cycle anything? No, it doesn't really cycle off that. The thermistor, because what if a customer wants delicate clothing or, or, or normal clothing, cottons? The temperatures are different. And if we used a single thermostat, that would only be as a safety like an override. I was thinking like a cycling thermostat like on the... Yeah, but you couldn't get multiple temperatures from that right. thermostat. Yeah. It doesn't have a thermostat heater in it to trick it. Yeah. Okay? So the thermistor is the, is the main control. Which thermostat is located on the heater and what is the temperature? This one's in the heater. This one's most likely on the heater, on the housing. Um, and its purpose is if we have an airflow problem, or the relay doesn't cycle it off, this thing here is gonna stop the whole machine and say, hey, it got way too hot in here, shut that thing down. But it says thermostat, it may be what? A thermal cutoff, I don't know. This is 175 degrees Celsius. That's 347 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's what's on the So that's an airflow problem, or the heater's not cycling off, and that's at the heater. Because the operating thermostat's on the blower housing, and the thermistor's also located over there. Most dryers sense the temperature, except for maybe GE, sense the temperature going out the drum. So even though we say 140 to 160 degrees, the drum temperature can be slightly hotter inside, okay? But the air sensing is after it leaves the drum and goes through that blower fan. But if we have, for some reason, the vent blocked, even though the fan's running, it's not pulling the air across the heater into the drum over the blower housing. Those sensors on the blower housing don't really know what's going on out over there by the heater, and the heater can get extremely hot. Well, that's not a typo, 175? I can't tell you if it's a typo. I have to see that machine and actually look at the temperature on that component. 
Put up this in S3 on your phone. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. check something in a minute. We'll get the part number. I'll look the part number up online, and we'll see if we can look at the specs of that thermostat, okay? How about that? All right. Um, let's finish the questions here. The next one. Which thermostat is located on the blower housing, and was the temperature CF? That was the 70, and it came out to about 140-something, right? Yeah. Um, if, no, was it 160, right? 158. 158, 160. If the dryer control board did not light up, so the board did light up, and you have proper voltage to the dryer, power cord, terminal block, where would you test next and for how much voltage? I said CN2123, because it's not connected to anything. And I would C assume that. Wait, wait, wait. C what? CN2123. There's nothing connected there, so why would you check power there? For real. <laughs> There's nothing there, it's an empty plug. <laughs> Remember, this is the transformer that feeds power to the board. And if you look, this is line one coming in. And if we follow this here, this is neutral come out. So we want to go here. This could be bad. We want to go to the board first and see if we got power there and those two pins on the board. That's if nice. I have 120 vo volts, that board should light up. If it don't light up, the board's bad. Now, if I have 120 here and I don't have 120 here, the only other component in that line is that thermostat. It could be bad. But I would go from here to here. And you may not have to do it there, you do it right at the plug if you want in the wall. Okay? So let's take a quick look at that one thermostat and see exactly what information we can get from it. So that was this 175 degree thermostat. So now we gotta figure out which one it is. I don't think the, it was uh, in the diagram there. The diagram only had, I think, two sensors in it. It had the blower house in the This is the thermistor, which is in the blower. This is the operating thermostat. That's it? Those are the only two it shows you? Mm-hmm. So until it shows? I think yeah. it skips a page or something. It's, it's missing information. You think so? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so <laughs> let's do this. Control F is to find. Yep. And we're going to search for thermostat. Okay, and it says what? Only two. Thermostat blower housing. And temperature. And thermostat temperature. Hmm, let's take a look at this one. Copy. Let's go on the internet here. Paste. You put that as an answer for number nine. <laughs> <laughs> So if we looked at this thermostat here, uh, and yeah, they didn't even are. show the thermostat, <laughs> did they? <laughs> hey, R R. <laughs> what happened? Go back. Like, like R -R. <laughs> wow, look at that. We're everywhere, right? Uh, wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, so and look, look who it shows. <laughs> So these are all the technicians that uh, replaced that part. Wow, Darius changes it a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, look at this one right here. Who's this one? <laughs> and that says an oven Samsung, so it's not that far, but that's quite cool. Okay, so let's, Samsung. let me see something here. Oh, God, that was funny. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> let's put that in repair clinic and see if it shows that component. And it doesn't even show a picture. It has a video. No, but the video is just a generic, just a generic video. Yeah. Oh. We can try one other place. Uh, Let's see if it's right there. It's dark in here and I'm typing in the dark, okay? <laughs> you could have to go on for the right? You're, if we, if one place don't have it, nobody. Image coming soon, so I can't tell you. Um, so we, we'd have to figure that out. But 175 is pretty hot. Okay, uh, but that would have to be somewhere on the heater, and it would probably be part of the heater housing because they don't show it as a separate component. Any questions on those diagrams? No.